I'm Danny Walker. Welcome to my channel. Today I will be having a special guest joining us. She was Miss USA 2009 Kristen Dalton. Hi, Danny. <laughs> Hello. I'm so excited to be on your show today. <laughs> Thank you. I'm excited too. What do you well, think? I just I wanted to bring you um, a copy of my book, um, which I have for you later. But I really wanted to just for you to have this life-size poster of me. Maybe you could put it in your room. Yeah. Above my bed. Yes, like, and I can even sign it for you. Maybe, yeah. like, maybe after the show. Yeah. That, Are you excited? Yep, that would be good. Okay. I mean, I made it, like, life size just for you because I knew you were a fan. Thank you, Kristen. Yeah, you're I'm welcome. Gonna... You want to, like, leave it in the shot, though, like, yeah. throughout the whole thing so we can maybe, just, like, maybe just a promote bit. it a lot? Oh, just a little bit of No? A little bit. Oh, okay, that's good. <laughs> Welcome to my channel. Please subscribe if you are new and follow me on social media at Danny Walker. And today I am here with none other than, well, you should recognize her if you do pageants. Really, you should anyways. But uh, Kristen Dalton, Miss USA 2009. And we are here to talk about her new book that's coming out, Yay! The Sparkle Effect. So first of all, tell me what The Sparkle Effect is all about. OMG. Well, I'm so excited. Thank you so much for having me here. You might have heard people talk to girls when they're coaching them or just in general. Like there's this thing about her and people call it the it factor. Yes. Yes. The yes. it factor. And I have a problem with the it factor. And the reason why is because it's not clearly defined. It's this mysterious thing that girls are kind of expected to just like turn on or to just like fake it till she makes it because she's like I don't know what that is it's just meant for some girls like are you born with it like can I have it too and I just feel like it's kind of unfair when I was competing for Miss USA I was not a front runner as in oh, oh shit. Candace is sitting right here and she is managing my phone thank you Candace for manager of Giovanni pause okay so anyways back to what you were saying so when you competed at Miss USA you weren't a front runner I was not a front runner so if you don't know what that means basically no one predicts you to win <laughs> I just want to say that just because you're not on people's radar does not mean that you're not on God's radar I was like okay even though other people aren't seeing it I'm gonna prove them wrong <laughs> The night that I won, the head judge came up to me and she was like, hey, Kristen, I just want to let you know that when they announced the top 15, um, all the judges leaned into me and they were like, how do we know who to pick? All these girls are pretty. And she was like, you're going to see it in one girl. It's the girl who sparkles. It's in her eyes and in her smile. And I was like, oh, great. That's awesome. Um, but I didn't really understand the magnitude of what she was saying and, until I started judging pageants and coaching girls, working in women's ministry, yes. uh, modeling, being out here in LA, going on auditions. And I saw firsthand that it was true. Like there's these girls that are, they are beautiful and they have like the resources and the following and the wealth and the status and the great boyfriend or husband who like foots the bill or whatever it is. But there are some girls that have this thing about them. Yep. It's the sparkle, this radiance, this warmth that draws you to her warmth because she has word. warmth because mm -hmm. she has this comfortability with herself. And when you have comfortability with yourself, then other people have other people feel comfort right. and they feel at ease with you. This whole started when I got invited to do a TED talk, and I was like, "What am I going to talk about?" Because it's supposed to be like a novel idea, you know, yeah. when you do TED talks. And <laughs> Ideas so. worth spreading. Yes. And so I was sitting on the plane with my husband, and he was like, "Well, what did it take?" For you to have that sparkle and I was like you're right like I need to define this and so I spent a few years kind of breaking it down what does it take so I don't call it the it factor I call it the sparkle effect because every woman can have it Love we that. are made to have it. it literally says in the Bible that we're called to be like a light like a city on a hilltop that cannot be hidden yes I've been judging a lot more now that I'm like gonna be on the other side and I see that in so many girls where you can't describe it or articulate it. Mm -hmm. You just see it and you're like, oh, I know. She's, right. she's just the one because there's yeah. something about her. So I, oh my gosh, I love this idea behind this book, honestly. I'm, I'm so excited to read it. Some of you Thank had, you. a, you've asked me a lot of common questions and I get this question all the time and it's, how do you deal with comparisons walking into a pageant when everybody's beautiful, everybody's talented? Mm -hmm. So what, what would your advice be to young girls about that? Comparison is such a big issue and it's definitely something I have dealt with a lot through my life. I remember being in high school and looking around at the girls who seemed so confident that were like cool and popular and I was like, what are they doing? What are they wearing? Same. What kind of makeup do they have on? I wasn't and that girl. No. And I would like take pieces of kind of what they were doing and like incorporate it into myself. Right. When we do that, we just become a shell of a person. Mm -hmm. And what's really exciting is as daughters of the king, 
we don't have to look around to other people for inspiration. We get to look to God for inspiration because he created us uniquely. And he is so creative, creative that we don't have to like, like search be like you. Yeah. Like yeah. just because you're, you're like, you know, bubbly and outgoing doesn't mean that I have to try to be like that because I'm introverted and reserved. I'm not saying that I am reserved because I would never clearly call I'm you not, reserved. but I am introverted. What I want to speak to um, in terms of comparison, what I feel like is so powerful is discovering who God created you specifically to be. Before we were formed in our mother's womb, he knew us, which means he came up with the idea of us and he pulled like pieces and characteristics of him and infused it into you. He was like, oh, this is a great idea. I'm going to come up with this amazing uh, collection of these majestic qualities of me and put it into you. And it, so it's like discovering what are my God qualities? What are my gifts? What are my, how did he create even my facial features, uh, blue eyes, like, you know, like how did he create my, my body and not try to fit into a certain body type because right. it's like the cool thing. Like just because like skinny jeans are in does not mean that we should all be wearing skinny jeans. You know what I'm saying? Like sometimes we need to like look in the mirror and be like, how did he make my body and how can I best how can I best honor it? There are certain things that I just like won't wear, certain things that I'll wear over and over and over, just because I'm like, this is what I have to work with and this is what looks best on it. So like always going for that. Mm -hmm. But I do want to touch on something you were kind of mentioning and it's the idea of like, not necessarily, I mean, I think it's cool to be inspired by other people. When I talked to a lot of my other sister queens at USA this year, who like myself competed for years and years and years, right. we all sat down and said, okay, so what was the difference between this year when we won and any other year. The resounding kind of agreement was, you know what, I finally decided to just be myself. Right. I decided to embrace whatever that is, uh -huh. no matter what. And if the judges aren't okay with it, then, the, then, then I'm not their cup of tea, I'm not for them. But it's so funny that that's the opposite of what happened was mm -hmm. as soon as we started to accept who we were mm -hmm. and celebrate that, we were all of a sudden very unique and stood mm -hmm. out in our own yeah. way without trying, without trying to necessarily be exactly like someone else mm -hmm. or fit into a mold. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and there's an ease and that comfortability factor that we talked about that comes with that because when you are at ease with yourself, then other people will feel that same way with you. And then, you know, people say like, just be yourself. And I used to get so frustrated. Me too. I'm like, I well, hated that saying. I don't know yourself. what that means, to be same, honest. Same, I was like, what does that look like <laughs> yeah. for me? Yes, I do coaching, train to coaching. And that's one of the things that we talk about and what I talk about in the book is like, who are you and discover who that is. And that used to frustrate me because I'm a performer. I'm a firstborn, I want to do the right thing. No, yeah, same. So, I'm here with you. Yeah, no, so I'm like, I'm just trying to do like what's right. Yes. So you yes. tell me. I'm like, you just let me know what you need and I'll be it. <laughs> exactly. The other question that what I get a lot is how do you compete in pageants or pursue a dream when everyone around you, your friends and your family, are telling you that it's silly, that they don't believe in you? I've experienced that personally mm -hmm. and I felt like I lost some friendships because of that because people told me that pageants are stupid they were so mm -hmm. dumb but to me the title meant so much more than just a crown and a sash it was what you were going to do with it so in my heart I knew that I had a desire to impact other young women and that just happened to be the medium that I was going right. to use exactly. but, but what do you think when I'm sure you've even had clients who have families mm -hmm. who aren't supportive if you are feeling that way I just want to encourage you to press in because oftentimes we don't fit in to our family mold or to our friend mold and I want to encourage you because we are promised that we are chosen called and set apart and oftentimes we feel like aliens in this world and that's like actually part of our spiritual DNA like if you ever feel like you're not fitting in or people don't get you or you're misunderstood or whatever, well, that's because you are called, chosen, and set apart. That's exciting. And you just gotta choose that you're gonna own it and walk in it. The second thing in my book, I talk about um, sparkling with positive relationships. So if you don't have family or friends who are on board, you're gonna have to find some people because it's tempting to fall into the trap of like, oh, I'll just blaze, blaze, blaze my own trail and do this on my own. You have to find support. You have to find people who care about you. One of the positive relationships I talk about is a coach. Sometimes you gotta hire a coach. Sometimes you wanna find a, a mentor, a spiritual mentor, someone who isn't gonna struggle with jealousy towards oh, you. Yes. Like someone who's yes. older than you, someone who's not in yes. your field, not someone competing. who's not competing with you yes. at all. Sometimes even a boyfriend or fiance. As long as he is making you feel like a treasure, 
then you know you're with the right guy. But if he makes you second guess yourself or makes you feel insecure, hashtag needs to go. Because it doesn't matter if it's a pageant or whatever goal you have, if somebody's not gonna be supportive of that, as long as it's not hurting you, you know, as long as it's not something that's like harmful to you. If they're not supporting that, then you, you really don't need that in your no. life. It, it's a red you know, flag, and a lot of times as girls, we try to like, make excuses for the right. guy and try to see his perspective, blah, blah, blah. But no, you want to partner with someone who is going to bring out the best in you and support your dreams. Speaking of dreams, when we have those dreams that we feel sometimes are really placed in our heart, that's how I felt like pursuing, you know, that title of Miss Montana. And I, in my heart, I just knew there was something pulling at me. Like I have this desire and I need to come back. So I think that a lot of girls have some, have something similar and they go through the process and the journey and then it doesn't work out mm -hmm. and they're left feeling blindsided and confused totally. because they said I had this desire mm -hmm. and it's so, unfulfilled yeah. so where do you go and how do you really deal with that loss and what do you do with it and it's so hard and, and I feel like that even transcends pageantry it can apply to really any dreams that we have sometimes okay so here's my two things the first thing is my sister went through this my sister Julia she was Miss North Carolina USA she was Miss North Carolina Teen USA before I ever even competed second runner for Miss Teen USA it's been a dream for both of us to be Miss USA it was like a, a thing in our house my mom was Miss North Carolina USA so it was like this family thing so then she competed for Miss USA in 2015 so six years after me she did not make the top 15 Okay. It's like one thing to not win and then it's a whole nother thing to not even get to compete. When you have literally had this dream in your heart since you were a little girl, for her it was a hope. It was the thing that she held on to during hard times that kind of kept her anchored. She was like, it's okay, I can get through this, this emotional abuse or I can get through this breakup or I can get through this disappointment because... I am like preparing to, to be Miss USA. It was a hard thing to process because she felt like God gave her that desire. Yes. So she, she almost felt duped and humiliated and let down by him. Right. Cause she's like, why would you even give me that? Yeah, that desire. To then leave me alone on stage, like in the background, humiliated. The, so the first thing I'll say is sometimes in life there are things you just, we just sometimes will never understand. But we have to trust that God works out everything together for our good and for his glory. So we have to look for, okay, how is he trying to work something out in me? Even though it's like, did you really have to do that? <laughs> and for his glory and choose that we're going to, we're going to honor the pain because there is something along the, along the way that he has done to prepare you to be a queen because we are all queens in this life, regardless of if we wear a crown. Sometimes I feel like God gives us a dream to use it to be that hope. Because even if you don't win, like you said, like pageantry is the was like the vessel or this is the platform of how yes. you're gonna help people. Yes. It's like sometimes he will use pageantry as stupid as it might sound to family or friends to train you up in something. Mm -hmm. Whether it be public speaking skills or confidence or your security or working out comparison, finding out who you really are. And so actually seeing this whole journey as training ground because that is what this life really is all about, is training for raining because sometimes he gives you a dream um, so you will train up in something and you don't know what he's going to prepare you for so now my sister lives in New York City she is slaying it as a girl boss in her job she can nail any interview uh, the hardest interview she's just like boom 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 my cousin's just like that so she had competed in pageants for 11 years and had one title that she had won granted it was an international title so she was very fortunate with that she was first runner up second runner up for like 10 years 11 years yeah. and but now every single job interview she goes into she gets it there are reasons that we go through certain things and there are things that we can grasp and I kind of take it back to this idea of a growth mindset versus a fixed mindset. Mm -hmm. Growth mindset is more focusing really on your journey and the value of the, that journey and yeah. what you're getting from that and that's really you know your prize. Fixed mindset who are people who believe basically that if I don't win I lose. If I go through a whole process and I don't come out on top then it was for nothing right. and then you miss the value. You miss everything that you could have learned in the process and all the growth that you could have had. So I really encourage a lot of girls to focus on that growth mindset mm -hmm. instead of a fixed mindset of just right. thinking that I only have value if I become Miss USA. Placing all of your self-worth on that end goal right. instead of the journey. I love all these points that we talked about today. This was amazing. Thank Yay. you so much for just sharing all of your advice and your experience. And I am so excited to read your book. And also, please give us information about this and when it's coming out, where we can get it, all of that. It releases on October 2nd. So exciting! <laughs>
Barnes and Noble, Amazon, Target, Walmart, uh, I mean, all the places I think you can buy books. Um, <laughs> and, oh, but I really want you to pre-order it because if you pre-order it, um, I have a private Facebook group called the Sparkle Effect Queens. Um, so you can join our group and I offer over $1,400 worth of value and like live coachings, audio declarations, exclusive content just for like the price of the book. So you should totes do it. Yes, and then where can they find you on social media so they can keep up with you all the time? Yay! At Kristen J. Dalton on Insta, and sheismore.com is my blog in case you want to just be inspired through articles and, and all that jazz. I love that. I love that so much. Well, but yeah, really, thank you so much for just sharing with my audience here. I know that they're going to appreciate it. You guys, if you have other questions for Kristen as well, leave those in the comment section below. You should check those out. Um, or obviously just find her on her social media and reach out to her. She's so sweet and I'm sure she'd be happy to talk to you. And other than that, guys, thank you so much for you watching. You just want to thank jo Giovanni too. Oh, yes, for Giovanni thank you. LA I'm here for Thank you so much, Giovanni LA, for yes. hosting us today. We are so grateful to have this beautiful space to film in. Obviously, this is an upgrade from what you guys normally see. <laughs> I wish I wish I could film here every day. Thank you so much, Giovanni LA. We Candace love Cruz, she's a yes. store manager here. She's the bomb.com. She's, like she's to compete in pageants. Yes. She has been beautiful and awesome, and you should totally follow her too. Candace yeah. Cruz. We're, gonna, Candace we're putting that in the description as yes. well. Follow Candace. Yeah, we love you. She's okay. like right over there. Anyway, thank you for having me. <laughs> thank you. I'm thank honored. you so much. I'm, no, I'm honored. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Miss USA on my channel right now. Thank you so much. We could literally talk to you all day. Tune in for the next episode and follow me on Instagram at Danny Walker and uh, submit all your video requests in the comments below. I can't wait to hear them and create new content for you. Yay! Thanks. Bye! Bye! Wait, yeah. I'm literally I love this. like in the back between us. <laughs> <laughs> wait, so do we Did I record right. this? Thank goodness for good light and bat and glittery background. Yes. yes. Um I wait, so it. what do you want to been filming? Oh, look at us. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> I love it.